What's going on, y'all? So listen. Yo, I'm a little frustrated, so if I come off that way, listen, I don't even fuck with the cops like that, but I had to call the cops because my neighbors, y'all know the ones that be doing the fucking most, okay? It is a fucking Wednesday night, y'all. I'm sorry. And then, this is a church show, okay? Regardless of if I go or not, you know, you're supposed to respect the Lord. And I try to limit my cursing and stuff like that. But, girl, they had me heated, y'all. They had me heated. Because there is no one outside. They are inside this camp. But, mind you, they took a lot that's across the street next to their house. And I don't even know if they paid for that bitch, but somehow they got that whole thing and they didn't turn it into a whole fucking um playground area, or whatever, where they just be entertaining every and anybody. And I I really want to see if they got a deed to that stuff or did they really just take it and put a fence around it? Because that's how they do it out here in Chicago. My granddad did the same thing. That's how I fucking know. Okay. Um, I'm just sitting here like there is no one outside. You are not outside. Why is your music playing so damn loud? I mean, so loud to the point that my windows and the whole house is just vibrating and shaking as if you just blow it one more time, everything's going to bust and break down, okay? That should not be happening. Now, if it's doing that to my house and you're across the street and you're sitting right there by it, what the fuck is going on with your eardrums? What type of super ass eardrums you got that your shit ain't busting? Girl, I'm so fucking heat. I had to call the cops. I had to call the cops to put in a noise complaint. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit, okay? You do that shit where you came from. You don't do that shit here. And I'm talking about whatever other neighborhood they came from because these motherfuckers moved in, okay, on this bullshit. But I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just had to get that rant out, okay? Let me... All right, y'all. I'm back. I'm... I apologize. I apologize. So, Greenleaf. Greenleaf was good tonight, girls and boys. Um, Listen. Next week, though, next week is going to be some mess, okay? And they ain't even finished yet because Mavis ain't even popped up, but. There they go again. Ugh, can't stand them. Anyway, Mavis ain't even pop herself back up, okay? And y'all know Mavis and Lynn's supposed to get, uh, Lady May's supposed to get into a fight, you know, shot and match, okay? So I'm waiting for that little showdown to happen. But what was going on in this episode, Grace is reliving, you know, some memories that she had of her past. You know, she keep having nightmares, nightmares about being in this old um, tunnel, that Mac told her, which we eventually find out about when she calls Rick Fox up um, because she can't sleep and she keeps having these, uh, you know, nightmares about her past. And, you know, it's, it, I don't know if it was one of those things that where something traumatic happens to a person and especially when they're younger or whatever and they just push that memory out and something triggers them later on in life and then they remember that it happened. I don't know if that's the case or if she already knew and she just didn't really say anything. But as we find out, we're wondering how come she's having these nightmares of this little girl that's running in this white dress from this little cave or underground um, railroad thing or whatever and then we hear Max saying, you can't tell nobody, little girl, because ain't nobody going to pay no attention. You should have said something earlier. Ain't nobody going to believe you, especially now. And I'm sitting here like, spoken like a true pedophile slash molester slash rapist. Okay? But I'm like, who is this? And automatically, at first, you would think that maybe it's um, um, char not charity, faith or whatever. But... Couldn't find out, you know, put two and two together since it's her that's having a dream. It is actually Grace. And what we find out later in the show when she's talking to Rick Fox, first of all, I didn't know that they was like on a break or something like that. I thought after the last week episode when she kissed all on them and shit, you know, they was back together and all that. But I guess they just chilling in the cut. And so she asked him, she was like... <laughs> First of all, this is so Christian. You know, y'all so, they so pastory and by the Bible and all this stuff. You know, trying to be holy and all that. <laughs> because what time was it that you called him? Because when he called, oh, answered that phone. First of all, you was in bed, Grace. And then when he answered the phone, he sounded like he had sleep all up in his throat and his eyes. Okay? And, um... He was like, he was like, no, long time no hear from. God damn, bitch, what time is it? No, I was like, um, I can't sleep. Um, <laughs> you mind coming over? I said, bitch, 
that sounds like booty call hour. And you know, they like, you know, and for him to come over just to talk or whatever and they ain't do nothing. Grace, you calling at the wrong time because lady would have been a motherfucker like me. Now listen, I know you got your values. I got mine too. I ain't going to let you do whatever it is. I'm not going to force you to do nothing. But girl, don't call me at no two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning wanting me to come over just to talk. Okay. Just to talk. Uncle, would you just cuddle up in the bed? No, we can cuddle. We can cut and do some other shit. What are you talking about? You know, let me stop playing. Let me stop playing. Corrupting these kids. So then somebody be like, but you're not Christian. Girl, shut up, okay? I'm just saying, and some of y'all know the drill too. I said, y'all really holding fast to it because, bitch, it wouldn't be me. Drop them, okay? And let's fuck all this stress away. That's what they need. Some of these people on here need to get laid because... They doing a lot. They are doing a lot. It's just a lot of stress, you know. They need some endorphins in their life that's really going, mm, you know, let them feel good. But anyway, so he comes over and she was like, you know, I just feel bad because ever since uh Faith passed away and then when Mac died, I'm just reliving a whole bunch of stuff about the fact that bef a few years before uh, Faith, Mac did what he did to Faith, he tried it with her. I said, girl, we knew that. And we kind of, I, I, and, and for some reason, when the first show came on in the very first season, and then we got the premise of what was going on and the reason why Grace was coming back, and then as it progressed in the way that she was going so hard, especially early in this season to Mac, it felt like a deeper issue was going on and not just Faith um getting hurt and then committing suicide and then Mac was the one that was out here molesting and raping her. It felt like it was something else underlying that and the fact that she was guilty of something. And this is what it was, okay? I was like, Faith couldn't have been the only one in that family that he was messing with. Could not have been, okay? I just couldn't believe that. And then when we see this episode pop up, kind of find out he tried it with um, Grace. But Grace, like the girl that was at, the last girl that was with Mac, she fought him off before he can do anything. And she was just too scared to say anything. And she's feeling guilt saying that. Maybe if she would have spoke up, nothing would have happened to Faith and Faith would still be here, you know. So Rick was, you know, trying to comfort her, trying to comfort her, you know, Darius, I should say, trying to comfort her and all that stuff. And, you know, just being that show. I was like, all right, listen, this is something as she said that she's never told anybody but you. And I said, wrong, wrong. She was like, since you can open up to me about your wife and all that stuff, girl, if you want to believe that, okay, I'm going to hold that at surface level, okay? Because that could be partly true and it could not be. I'm just saying, you got, you just, you know, I watch too much fucking TV, so sometimes every time I be trying to trust people, it's like, don't trust that bitch that turn out to be wrong and shit. Something about Darius is not sitting right with me because he's this reporter. His life is about getting these scoops and these stories on these scandals and stuff like that. And you just add a fuel to the fire, okay? And it's just like he's collecting all this shit. So once y'all get through, he's just waiting to pop and spring it up on y'all and expose, exposing the whole Greeling family and how fucked up y'all really are, okay? He's trying to infiltrate y'all, okay? Through fucking grace. Girl, girl, amazing grace. Uh-uh, all right? Um, how sweet the name, okay? So I'm sitting here thinking like charity, Charity, did Mac do something to you too? Like, girl, we just need to go, Jacob. I mean, because niggas is nasty. Niggas is nasty. First of all, you nasty as fuck trying to fuck with a child. And then to do it to a boy child too. That's just, that I, both of them just disgusting. It's just, it's just nasty doing it to a child, period. But, you know, um, we need to get some, okay, we need to get some clarity up in here. So, Charity. Did he touch or do anything to you? Like, we need to ask these questions. It's so unfortunate what we do. And speaking of charity ass, charity, leave your barry alone for a minute, okay? Don't try to, um, you know, just, I, I guess you ain't been out of a relationship in a long time. So you don't know how to just go out here and have fun and date. And because you like a pastor's daughter and you heavily in the church or whatever, and then you got this domineering mother around and all this stuff, and everybody's calculating your moves. So you just think that, hey, I can't just really date around or, or just be free for a minute, just live for a minute. Let me try to wife up and boo up and um husband up to the next person or whatever. Because Kevin then gone, 
bitch. I hope we find out what the fuck happened to Kevin next week. Because, listen, Charity was going to go off on Aaron. Okay? So just because he going through some stuff and then he just going to... I said, girl, come through, Charity. Because we want to know. Did y'all write his ass off? Did he really just leave and all this shit? I got a feeling they going to find out that something happened between Aaron and Charity. I mean, Aaron and um Kevin. Because, um... Bray Campbell is back, and he gonna tell him, listen, um, Aaron came up in there, so it's just a sin, it's still a sin, the fact that you fucked around with a whole bunch of women, and they was women, I said, oops, oops, you better tell him, you better tell him, okay, cheating, and all this stuff, and then Lady May slapping the shit out of Ray Campbell, I said, where's Lisa, okay, where the fuck is Lisa at, you know, who control this nigga, okay, Secrets is about to be put out, okay? That's all. I can't wait for that episode. I really can. I'm actually anticipating. And so, you know, Jabari, they doing this song for this singer, gospel singer. And the gospel singer has had Charity rewrite certain parts of the song so many times that she is over it. And I can understand her frustration. And, you know, I see where Jabari is coming from after, you know, they actually get the finished product done. And, you know, she finally approves this time that she likes this version of it. And Charity was upset because she feels as though she butchered her song. And that was her song. When you sell a song, most likely that's what happens. They have free reign to do whatever it is that they want. And if they want to, you know, because they're the artist and they're the one that's paying for it, they can switch it up and do whatever it is that they want. And most of the time you're trying to accommodate the artist so that you can get your song, um, your, your product, you know, made and, and sold and your money in there. And so I can understand the frustration. Like, this is what I had envisioned, but then you want to take this out and you want me to do this and you want me to change this. Like, uh, seems like a little prissy bitch and shit like that. That's how Charity was acting like, girl, I'm over this shit. You know, I was like, at one point I said, Charity, tell the bitch to write her own shit then. Okay. When she, took that permanent fucking red marker y'all know what the red marker meant you've been to school too bitch you did not want to see that red ink on your paper you'd be like ain't this about a bitch especially when you thought that you had everything right then you get that paper back you like red mark what the fuck bitch you could have put a blue one on there or something black or something erasable pencil bitch like come on but she just started scribbling and shit on there i said man chair just looked at it like well, girl, you could have did it yourself, but Jabari had to calm her down, and she was like, you know what? When they got through, Jabari had kissed old girl on the cheek, so Charity looking at this, and I said, uh-oh, another cheek kiss. What's going on, Jabari? You messing around with this one? Charity was like, you know what? I'm over this shit. What's going on between me and you, okay? He was like, what you talking about? I'm talking about what's going on between me and you. Like, I like you. Like, I like like you, okay? So do you like me or what? He was like, listen, listen, listen. I kiss everybody on the cheek and stuff like that. And we are working. This is not the time to talk about this. But, I mean, I like you too. And let's just finish this and get this out the way. And then I'll come back and we'll talk or whatever. In that moment, Jabari was right. Because they were on the clock. We ain't got time to do this personal shit. So let's get this business out the way. Then they come back and they was talking. And he was like, you know what, Charity? Let me just tell you this. About the conversation that we had the other day. Or a few minutes ago, maybe an hour or two. Um, I mean, I know my way has been kind of shady and hard to read. It's just that you have a child, okay? And I don't want to just come up into something and, and, and just, you know, when you have so much just going on already, okay? It's like, because I like you. Like, I really, really like you. I said... Jabari, stop playing all this world play and all this stuff. Girl, just tell them. Let me tell you something. I don't want to come in and then fuck up your life when you already got shit that's going on, okay? But I'm in feeling you, so I apologize. That's all that was needed to be said, okay? Charity would have took it any fucking way, all right? So I guess they're going to be a thing. Because did y'all hear when she first came down there and he was like, <laughs> I'm going to set you up at the hotel. She was like, you know what? I mean, you ain't got to set me up at a hotel if you got a guest room. I said, Charity, you moving too fast. You moving too fast and you're not reading the lines, okay? You're not reading the lines. Pump the brakes just a little bit. I know you've been out the game for a minute. Don't come off a little thigh-ish, okay? Okay. But um, moving on from that, they going to settle that shit. Jabari and her going to wind up hooking up. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if he get a taste and then leave. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm sitting here like... 
all y'all motherfuckers on here are playing in the church and y'all sin it. Okay? Jabari, you are a Christian writer, producer, whatever, and you are coveting another man's wife. Okay? He was doing it ever since her and Kevin was together. All right? Charity, you too. Okay? But anyway, moving on. What other storyline was on here? Um, Lil Zora. Let me get her little ass out the way. Zora's in the car with Isaiah. Isaiah, she talking to him about the cotillion. This little bitch, he really thinks that he could control any and everything. And Zora is really not that dumb as she try to be sometimes or he try to make her. She's dumb as fuck for still going out with this boy who has, and she can't read between the lines between his tendencies of being abusive. But she do talks up and he's trying to dumb her down. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to put her under control and on a leash. That's what he's trying. But it's not necessarily working the way that he wants. And so when it doesn't work, he acts out. When they was at the studio, she spoke up. She told the truth. He tried to put her back and put her in his and put her in her so called place that was under his thumb by cursing her out and making her feel less than, you know. Then you uh this whole thing with the texting and stuff hangs up on her face because she couldn't text him back or whatever because she didn't have her phone when she was at the cotillion rehearsal. Now this time you want to go. She's talking about the cotillion. You know she needs to go to the cotillion. And she's already had a set that she's going to the cotillion. And she's talking about you bringing her to the cotillion. And you're going to say, I have a surprise for you in a joke and um, glove box. And it was tickets or whatever to this other show that he was performing at that's going to be on the same weekend and day as the cotillion. And you're going to tell her, I figure we can go to that one instead. She said, bitch, no. I want to go to the fucking cotillion. And that's what's going on, okay? And I'm sitting here like, how fucking dare you tell her what the fuck she should go to? And they're going to say something, well, who you going with? She said, I don't know. If it ain't fucking you, I'll go with somebody else. Some random person, bitch, whatever. Oh, why she say that? Because that just pissed him off a little bit. He pumped the brakes on the goddamn um car so hard that, you know, she fell forward and hit her head on the dashboard. He didn't hit her this time, but he caused the injury because of what he did. He ain't going to blame it on the seatbelt. Granted, she should have had the seatbelt in front instead of behind. Like he did say, I'll give him that. But he knew exactly what the fuck he was doing. That's why he did that. So now she has a bruise on her forehead. She's sneaking into the house, you know, trying to go ahead and um sneak past her parents and go put some makeup on it and disguise the bruise or whatever. And, um, you know, we see them later. Isaiah was up there at the um, Triumphic, singing with some girl. And I'm sitting here like, this nigga ain't learned to lip sync yet. You're not all that, okay? I'm just going to tell you that. You're not all that, Isaiah. You know, go find another fish, bitch, okay? Zora, leave that nigga alone. Leave him alone. Cut it off, all right? So, let's get to the main topic of this episode. The main, main story. Carissa. <laughs> Now, we established last week that Jacob did not want Carissa to go up there talking to the parents, whatever, about what's going on with Basie and everything. But Carissa asked, went on ahead and spilled most of the beans first, and then she came back and spilled it all this episode. Jacob is like, why the fuck would you do this? I told you I didn't want you talking to them about this. And her whole thing is, you know, she just wants Jacob to be the head of this church. Want Basie to either step down. Give Jacob to the the um be the preacher of it, and she can be first lady, and um you know skanks to be out their way, so that's why you tell you know the pastor everything that's bishop everything that's going on, and you know that they already got ammunition and don't like skanks, so they're gonna do whatever it is that they gotta do. She wants the bishop basically to do that dirty work. That's what Carissa is doing. Okay, they couldn't get him fully out. So let me give you all this information and you tell it to the bishop. And then the bishop going to go over there and talk to them and basically tell um, Skanks either you resign or you go to jail. You resign and go to jail or you just go to jail because, you know, these motherfuckers that you owe money to, they going to beat your ass and all this shit, which eventually does happen. He gets his ass beat so bad by Vince that came up in there. I think his name was Vincent or something like that. And it looked like he had on the same black clothes that he had on last week when we saw him. I said, damn, you recycle? Hmm, okay. You know, he said, they only had him on for like an hour. Shit. 
And I said, I hope you wiped your ass good then. All right, but um, anyway, he beat his ass, okay? He beat his ass after the bishop came up in there trying to threaten him about either you resign or all this shit and give the church over to Jacob. And, you know, when he get his ass whooped, Tasha come up and say, baby, you just got to do what you got to do for me, okay? So eventually, because of her tears, you know... He went on ahead and did what he had to do. Tasha come running over there. <laughs> they beat his ass real bad. Oh my God. Like they fucked up his pretty face. I said, you could let that part. <laughs> but they did get him. And eventually he does go ahead and um say that he's going to resign and give the church over to Jacob. He's talking to Jacob about it. Jacob really don't want it because Jacob feel as though, you know, he already had his plan in motion and he want to go about it the right way. And Carissa got to convince him to go ahead and take it. And I'm sitting here like Carissa tried to convince him, Skates, Skates convinced him eventually. And he was like, why are you telling me this? Why are you trusting me with this? He was like, because regardless of what's been going on, you've been a realest friend to me, like a brother to me for real, for real. And, you know, I, Carissa is just. Carissa been wanting to be first lady since the first time we saw her. And that's why she was mad that Grace came back. Because she wasn't going to... It wasn't necessarily because Jacob was no longer the apple of the bishop's eye. It was because she was losing her opportunity to get a little bit of power. Carissa is very money hungry and power hungry. And I would say more so power hungry. She wants that status. She wants to look down on folks for real, for real. All right? Because that's how she acts. All right? And she's been on this trip and on this plan, to be quite honest. She's been putting the stuff up in Jacob's mind. She's been pushing him to do stuff so that she can get to where she wants to go. It's all about her. It ain't about Jacob. And it irritates me so much the way that they do this. But yet y'all want to look down your nose at other people, you know. But y'all up here committing sin. The, um, the pastor, bishop, you going in there basically threatening skanks. If you don't do this, this going to happen. That's blackmailing. Skanks up here doing what? Gambling and earning money. That's a sin too. Okay. Um, um, Carissa, you being power hungry, money hungry, going behind your husband back and doing all this other stuff. That's a sin too. Okay. So all of y'all doing all this shady, sinful stuff, but yet you call other people out on their shit. You know, it's a whole bunch of hypocrisy and contradictions going on. Okay. But, um, but that's the church. Moving on. I said, whatever. So, you know, he said, I'm gonna go up in front of the people and I'm gonna resign. And that's what happened. They was like, oh, oh. You know, he didn't tell him exactly what he did. He said, you know, I sinned before God, but I also, you know, sinned for y'all and it was fucked up and all that shit. After the whole thing gets over with, Jacob do his little speech because he's now the new pastor. And then um, Bishop and um, Lady May go in the back and they see Tasha sitting there and was like, why are you crying? Where is he? Did he run? It was like, yeah, are you telling the truth? Because you know where he's at. She was like, I don't know where he's at. And the reason why I don't, because he went on ahead and left because I said I wouldn't go with him. I said, damn, but I do not feel like Skanks is not gone. Skanks is still working on the plan because let's, let's, uh, you, we, we, let's not forget, get your words together. Okay. Let's not forget that Skanks been trying to take down Bishop because he feel as though Bishop is responsible for the death of his father. All right. Remember that. Okay. He thought that he would get him through Jacob. It didn't work right. So of course he's going to develop another plan. And if he on the run or he doing something else, because he was supposed to turn himself into the cops, but he's not going to do that because you know, he was using church funds and stuff and that's illegal. That's, you know, that's a crime. And so, um, he, he developing something and I'm pretty sure he's going to try to come back for Bishop because he's not just going to let that end of it go. All right. And remember, Somebody in the comments brought something up, and I want to know what y'all feel about this. So, this whole thing with Rochelle, it'll be, it, it's crazy, but I kind of see it, but then again, I don't know, but you never know with these shows. Rochelle comes in, and she did mention Skanks out of nowhere, and remember, also, when they found out that Skanks said that the guy that died in that fire in that church was his father, Bishop and then was like, I thought he only had a daughter, so what is he talking about? Somebody said, what if Rochelle is old boy's daughter? And they really just working the bishop. I mean, that could be a possibility. 
how y'all feel about that, okay? But at the end of the very end of the episode, um, Bishop gets a call from Ray Campbell saying that we need to talk and we need to talk now and I'm on my way to see you. I said, oops, okay. You know, Lady May looking like what y'all got to say. What he about to spill? The tea on everything. But that was Greenleaf, y'all. Once again, I apologize for going off in the beginning. <laughs> because my neighbors. But um, anyway, I will see you guys later. Enjoy your night. Peace.